Hey guys, so in this uh, video I will show you how to use H5 cluster component. I'll show you how to create clusters, how to create nested clusters, how to simulate them and uh, demolish. And first, before I uh, start this clustering, I need to show you the problem which it can help you to solve. So, uh, here's my tube and here's my rock and I want to drop this rock to the tube to onto this tube. So I will add rigid component. So and the rigid component is the only way to simulate clusters. In previous video I showed you how to simulate mesh object type, so now I will show you how to simulate clusters. Right now I will set both of them to mesh just to show you the problem you may have. And I will turn off demolition for both of them. Okay, so if I will start simulation now, you'll see that the problem is that Unity right now cannot simulate concave meshes, concave dynamic meshes. Uh, if I will go to mesh collider, you'll see that it's convex, and basically it is just a cylinder. It's not a tube. For dynamic engine, there is no this hole, just an uh, invisible edge here. So you can turn off convex, but in this case, it will just fall down well, like this. So for now, it's not possible to simulate dynamic concave object. You can. Uh, set them to kinematic here, and this is the only way to simulate objects with uh, holes and any other concave objects. So, in this case, it still works as it should, but only for kinematic objects, not for dynamic. So, this is the problem, and uh, this is uh, well, let me turn off this one. So this is how we can solve this. Uh, I will add first. I need to. Well, I want to shatter this tube to several fragments. I will add shatter component. I don't need rigid anymore. And I will set it. Well, 30 fragments will be enough. So I fragment it. This is my root with all the fragments here. And I don't need this original tube anymore. So here my tube. And it has 22 fragments. Every fragment can be selected. Just a mesh filter with mesh renderer. And now, uh, instead of adding refire rigid component to every fragment, uh, I add it to this root. And here, instead of object type mesh, I set it to cluster. And again, I will turn off demolition for now. So if I will, and as you can see, this is dynamic object. So if I will start simulation now, you can see that it simulates it as one solid object uh, with this hole. So it uh, creates mesh collider for every fragment it has as a child. As a child, and uh, well, this is how it works. So you can you can see that it you can simulate it just one solid object, but but as one solid concave object. So this is how I solve this problem I showed you before. And in the same way you can demolish, uh, so clustering, basically clustering uh, might be useful not for demolition but uh, only for dynamic simulation like I show you right now. But also you can demolish them and you can demolish them into the fragments it already has. So you don't need to pre-cache anything because all the fragments are already inside. So in this case I will set it like this to break it using this rock and uh, I will set it here demolition to runtime this is the only type uh, which works for clusters because all the fragments are already inside clusters and my max depth is one which means that I can demolish this cluster into all these fragments but uh, if I will set max depth of Two, it will be possible to demolish cluster to all the fragments to start simulate every fragment separately and every fragment will be possible to demolish to Warner fragments as well but for now just uh, one depth level just to show you how it works and maybe fire stability so I will start simulation and now it's broken as you can see it wasn't broken at the, at the beginning maybe put it here And when the rock uh, hit it, only after that it was broken. 
with the separate pieces. Now every fragment has its own refrigerated component and it's set to mesh and it can be demolished further. So uh, this is how you can demolish clusters. And uh, this is how, let me show you also uh, how to create them manually. So again, in this case I used a fire shutter, but what it did, to just create empty wood with all the fragments. So in this case I created this chair manually. I just used some cubes, scale them in all directions and create this chair. So nothing, nothing fancy, just uh, simplest primitives. So again, I created all this cube and I added them as a children under this empty wood. So again, I can add each component here, set it to clusters here. You, I can actually can keep it as mesh, but uh, when simulation, when uh, play mode will start, it will see that uh, this object has no any mesh, but it has a lot of child, children. Uh, so it will figure out that this is not a mesh type, but clustering, but uh, it's better just to set it manually here. So you'll see what it is. And now again, I will turn off demolition and uh, well, let me rotate it back like this. Stay. You can see I can put this chair above this cube and when I will start simulation well it was broken. Let me turn off demolition for cube. Just pure dynamic simulation. Okay. So you can see now you have two clusters interacting with each other. I mean, not interacting, but you can well use convex, concave, dynamic objects, and you are not restricted to this, this limitation, which has unity for now. So it's useful not only for demolition, but even for basic uh, dynamic concave simulations. Uh, and now. Let me show you how we can nest the cluster. So right now I have I have this uh, I have this chair and all the all the all these uh, elements they under one root. So when it demolishes, it demolishes to it makes all these fragments a separate uh, physics subject. So instead of having this one root, I will create couple of other roots and another one so now I will select this upper part and I will add them as children for this one for this let me call it up or maybe top and the rest parts I will add under this empty uh, uh, game object and I will set it to bottom so now this is how you can create nested clusters. So this is your cluster, uh, original cluster, but then you have inside of it a couple of other clusters. You have this upper part and you have this bottom part. So if I will start, if I will, well, it's still, if you, if you will start simulation, it still will be simulated as one solid object. But now you can start demolishing it. I will set it to runtime. And I have to see it was demolished to two uh, separate clusters. So this top guy has its own rigid component and the bottom part also has its own rigid component. They are still concave. You still can simulate them separately. And now let me show you how to demolish them even further. And uh, it works just like regular demolition. All we need to do is just set max depth to two. So now it will, and uh, let me increase save seconds, maybe to three seconds. So now I can, you can see that it will be demolished to these two clusters. But then you can select this top part. And if you will interact with it as well, well, it will be demolished. So even deeper, as you can see, it was 
it demolished this bottom part as well when it hit it. So it's not clustered as well anymore. And the same way you can let's say set here depth level max depth to three. In this case it will first it will demolish this chair to this top and bottom part. At the second level it will demolish every cluster to a separate object and at this last third uh, depth it will start uh, demolishing this objects in runtime to corner fragments. So I will set maybe well 15 will be enough and I will decrease save seconds maybe one. So now it will be demolished to this part. Okay. Well, I don't want to manually drop it. Well, I can drop it manually and break it again. But I want it to happen inside game. So let me decrease my save seconds, make it even lower, not too much. Uh, okay, and well, I can drop this rock. Alright, you already can see that some of them already were demolished even deeper. But let's make it more spectacular. Oh, so uh, there are not too much fragments right now. This is because I have my death fate very low. So at the last third death level, it's just a couple of fragments left. So let me set it to one. Let me let me set this rock above this chair and I will set it here. Okay, let's do it again. Well, okay. Well, you see, it's amount set to two now. Which is pretty low. Seems I, I forgot to set it to one. Oh right. I did it not for this one. Oh okay, so let's 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 try it again. But you got the idea. So this is my first demolition level. Top and bottom right now simulates separately. And uh, okay, now it was demolished. And you can see that this uh, plank also was demolished. Okay, so this time it wasn't broken because it was uh, saved by save time, save seconds time. It was hit when. Work. It was impossible to break it. Maybe we should increase or maybe decrease amount of uh, save seconds. Okay, let's set it to one. <laughs> well, well, you got the idea how it works. Maybe I can set it even to. The lowest value, but in this case, it will be demolished right away. Okay, <laughs> well, you uh, got the idea how it works. And next thing I want to show you is how you can create uh, this kind of clusters uh, using cluster component. So its main purpose is creating is to create nested clusters because to create the basic one uh, layer cluster you can do this manually or using shatter component it uh, creates this empty empty game object with all fragments by default but uh, you of course you can manually create like other empty game objects like this and then manually collecting all the fragments you want to be as one cluster 
actually let me show you so you can manually create a couple of other game objects let's say like this so you will have like this now this will be your first cluster that will be your second cluster then you can add the rest maybe not the rest but some of them maybe these guys so another cluster and this these fragments will stay at this so when you will start simulation I will set it to demolition to runtime. Now see that it was demolished to three clusters which you set up manually. So in some cases that might be appropriate for you. In some cases maybe you want to manually create all the uh, all the clusters. So it will be designed in your own demolition way. And again, you can, let's say you can take this guy, you can create nested clusters inside of it. So this, not this. So these two clusters should be inside another cluster and so on. Okay, and now I want to show you how to use a uh, refry cluster component. And this is the component which allows you to create all these nested clusters. Instead of creating them manually, you can create them using this uh, component. So first you need to uh, you need to get a bunch of fragments to clusterize them. To do so, I will use shatter component and uh, I will fragment this uh, concrete uh, flat concrete cube to 200 fragments. I will uh, disable original object so this is my concrete root with 100 fragments here they are and uh, now you can so basically this is already finished cluster but it has only one layer all the fragments under one root but now you can add cluster component to this empty root and so this is how it looks like and you can see there are two uh, orange spheres you can select cluster root by clicking on them if you will try to select it here you will just select fragments so you can select them only here but it's not always comfortable so you can select in the new port by clicking this orange spheres and uh, well here there are two, two ways to create clusters first way is by point cloud it doesn't it, it works for any kind of fragments uh, even if they are not connected to each other like this chair because I just uh, combined it with using other using just cubes they are not connected to each other like this Warner fragments which say tied to each other and share common faces so for such object which you just created by your own it's better to use well it's not better to use it's the only way to use this by point cloud clustering but in case you have this warning fragments and uh, in this case it use this by shared area tab because in this case it will create uh, it will take into account uh, every fragment shared area with its neighbor and based on this information it will provide better clusters so now let me create first clusters and uh, I will set by shared area in this case we'll use this property so minimum amount and maximum amount defines how many shards there will be inside every cluster I will set it maybe well two or four and now you can put it to clusterize so it uh, doesn't happen inside viewport any, anything but uh, you can see that now it created all this uh, all these uh, well, clusters inside this main cluster and every cluster has well about from four to eight shards and shards is uh, means that one single element of cluster you see them you can turn on this color preview so now you can see how your clusters looks like so if I will start there another way to preview is to scale preview so we can play with this slider to see how they looks like how they will be demolished pieces so basically you already can add 
require a different component right now. You don't need classic component anymore. It's pure editor component. You just need to create this hierarchy. So now I will set its object type to cluster and I will use one dev demolition. Okay, you see, and I guess this fragments looks much much more better than regular Voronoi fragments. I mean they have they regular, they concave. Right now it creates only one layer of uh, these additional clusters. Every cluster has its own, you see, uh, shards. But you can go deeper, you can set it to, let's say, Dev2. And you can clusterize again. And now you can see that it creates not too much clusters, so just, uh, well, 10 or 9 clusters but inside every cluster there is another cluster so this is how you can see again color preview and scale preview but in this case if, if you will start playing with the slider you will start seeing this cluster this first layer of clustering but if you'll go uh, move, if you move, will move slider to the right you'll start see deeper clusters so this is how it will be demolished you can actually see how it will be demolished during simulation first, it will be demolished to these pieces, then every of this piece will be demolished to these pieces. And if you want to go even deeper, you can set it to 3, you can maybe, well, let's say here, 5 and 6, clusterize. So now you have just 4 clusters, uh, and if you start to go deeper, that will be your first layer of clusters that will be your second layer of clusters and that will be your third layer of clusters and uh, now if I will start demolition again I need to increase my max dev because for now it will be demolished only to this well you see it's uh, because it's con con a concave right now they just stay tied to each other it's even impossible to break it with such sim such slow such small uh, collision, so let me move it upper, maybe rotate it. And actually, let me turn off color preview. <laughs> well, you see how it works now looks like a real concave object well maybe I need more cluster for first layer maybe like this maybe even two and also you can change seed if you don't like this combination you can try a different one play with the properties just to get different uh, uh, hierarchy so this is uh, how you can simulate clusters and demolish them but ne now let's set here dev level to 3 And in this case, you will see how it gradually demolished this piece, and then every of this piece demolished further and further. Okay, let's start simulation. So this is how it looks. So maybe I need to increase my save second to break it so it will not be broken to last dev <coughs> layer so fast.
still this is how it looks like and you see now it reached its maximum death layer death layer current death is three maximum of three you can actually change it in one time like we can increase it and now it will be possible to demolish even further like this guy so you see it's impossible to demolish right now but if i will set it to four it is possible now So my original column, just again, you already saw ev everything, what I want to show you now, but just a column, I'm shattering it with shatter component to this amount of fragments, hide original, take my root with all the fragments, apply cluster component. Uh, well, now let me create bunch of clusters I will use death layer maybe two and uh, well that will be enough clusterize creates all this hierarchy which I can preview color preview sometimes sucks also you can see that it does not scale this object because this fragment is already, it's not part of the cluster, just separate, it'll be separate fragment just on the start. But anyway, it's still good enough. So that will be my main clusters. And then it will be possible to demolish them further. So now I can apply rigid component. I will set it to cluster, runtime demolition, death level 2. And I guess that's it. Okay, it was demolished from the first contact. Let me increase. Solidity and also let me drop this lock, also rigid component, not demolishable. You see, uh, when you use clusters, it's much harder to break object because they're just 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 not a, not an easy task to demolish them because. They are concave and they keep each other. And I guess it looks much more real. Well, this is much better demolition because otherwise you will end up just uh, just a crumbling uh, convex fragment. So in some cases it's good enough. In some cases you may need something more complicated, and this is when you can use clusters to make your simulations look more real and more complex. And you, when you actually can design how your uh, parts will be demolished, you actually can. Uh, create this demolition as you want well okay that's it and uh, thank you for watching okay see you next time